Howdy folks, we got some more disturbing stories about the Buffalo Ranch. Aliens, I'll call them, like I said, I, I never laid eyes on one, but I saw some of the damnedest thing done to Buffalo and the lights we chased and such, so I'm calling this the Alien Chronicles, and I got 20 or 30 more stories. So. One recurrent thing that happened every summer, and not every night that we were out there chasing the lights and a dead buffalo or this or that, but at least once or twice every summer, you'd wake up in the middle of the night and have loud rock and roll music playing. Now my house sat in the middle of 15,000 acres. That ranch was almost a perfect square, so I was a long ways from the neighbors. Couldn't see any lights, couldn't hear dogs barking, and all of a sudden you'd wake up and there'd be Jim Morrison from the doors or Led Zeppelin singing Stairway to Heaven, and I mean the glass would be vibrating in my windows. You couldn't tell where it was coming from. It was so dang loud, you know. And, well, I'd jump up and get in a truck and grab an assault rifle and my Russian night vision goggles and get out there and go looking for things. And, of course, I never did find anything. But it was, like I say, a recurring thing. So one night I get woken up. And instead of rock and roll music, it's bird calls. And I mean loud bird calls. And every bird call I have ever heard in tropical sounding stuff that I'd never heard, you know, I'd seen it on TV or whatnot. And I know birds. I'm, I've been a bird watcher my whole life. I started doing bird taxidermy when I was 12 years old. And then I worked with a licensed bander up in Montana. And we trapped close to 100 eagles, owls, hawks, and ospreys. And I did all the climbing for him, so, so I got to handle a lot of birds and I know bird calls. Well, these were calls I'd never heard, so. Anyhow, I run around that ranch for a couple hours that night, and it'd take six hours on a dirt bike to run that perimeter fence and all day in a pickup truck. And I was probably out there three or four hours, checked a lot of perimeter gates, they were all locked up. And no tracks, no sign, nothing. Of course, the bird calls it stopped, so. I got home, went back to bed, and I told you a story about that great old dog, Mooner, that saved me from a buffalo mauling. Well, he was in the house, and he was a hell of a watchdog. If somebody turned off the county road a mile and a half away to come in that ranch, he knew it. And he'd bark and whine, let me know someone was coming. And I just happened to be babysitting a blue healer for a young kid. He did day work on the ranch, and he still lived with Mom and Dad, and they told him he couldn't have a dog. Well, of course, he went out and got one anyway, and he, he had this little blue healer pup, and he'd left him at my house every night when he went home to his folks' house. So I got these two pretty good cow dogs in the house, and... The bird calls, and I'm kind of tired and everything that night, and go to bed. And I get up in the morning, and I'm stumbling out and through the living room, going in the kitchen to build a pot of coffee. And I come around the corner, and I mean, my breath just went out. I just seized up everything in my refrigerator. And I mean, down to little Tabasco hot sauce bottles and every egg out of the carton, every condiment in the door. Everything was in a six-foot triangle on my kitchen floor. Now, the triangle has a lot of bearing on these stories because whenever they killed and mutilated a bull buffalo, they'd pour and paint a big orangish-red triangle on the forehead, and when they killed and mutilated a cow and cut the reproductive organs or pulled the fetus out of her, they'd always leave that orange triangle on the, on the rib cage of the cow. So I stumble into that kitchen, and here's everything in my refrigerator on that floor, and I'm thinking, how did anything get past those two cow dogs? Because... Old Mooner, he didn't never let anybody in that house. And so I started to ease through that kitchen, let the dogs out, and they wouldn't cross that kitchen floor. They just looked at me like, no way. <laughs> and I, you know, they didn't whine or cry or act sheepish. They just would not come in that kitchen. So I took them out to the living room and let them go out like that. But I got to tell you, that was a pretty disturbing thing. And I became a real light sleeper after that. I went out and looked around, and I'm no African bushman, but I can read sign, and I've bow hunted since I was 12, and I, I never found a track. No matter where I went or no matter what happened on that ranch, there was never any sign, and I'm pretty handy with reading sign. But anyhow, that was, that was a pretty wild night and an even wilder morning, and come on back and I'll tell you more stories about the disturbing things of the Alien Chronicles.